another edition of the UK Law Weekly podcast with me, your host, Marcus Cleaver. This week, we're going to be looking at the case of In the Matter of an Application by Kevin Maguire for Judicial Review. And the citation for this case is 2018 UKSC 17. This Northern Irish case asks a relatively simple question. Under legal aid, what rights do you have to choose your own representation? Kevin Maguire was a defendant in a criminal trial and was entitled to legal aid so that two counsel could represent him in the proceedings. One of them was a solicitor advocate, but the important counsel for the purposes of this judicial review was a barrister called Mark Barlow. It looked to be a pretty good choice by Maguire because the jury couldn't reach a verdict and so they were all discharged. When he was tried again, he unsurprisingly wanted to have Barlow as the lead counsel for round two. But in the meantime, Barlow had actually been disciplined by the Bar Council of Northern Ireland, and so he had to inform Maguire that he could not act as his leading counsel. Maguire was not happy about this and began proceedings against the Bar Council on the basis that this was a violation of his human rights, with regard to Article 6 of the European Convention on Human Rights, the right to a fair trial. While the Bar Council rejected this, on a personal front, things still went well for Mr Maguire. In the retrial, he was acquitted on seven counts, and once again the jury could not reach a verdict on the other four. The prosecution clearly knew what was up by this point and decided not to come back for a third trial. The present judicial review proceeded nonetheless, and so this is what we will be focusing on as the case arrived before the Supreme Court. Getting into the details of Article 6 of the Convention, we can see that the relevant provision is Article 6.3c. This states that when an individual is charged with a criminal offence, he has the right to, quote, defend himself in person or through legal assistance of his choosing, end quote. Maguire's argument then was fairly simple. The wording suggests that he has the right to choose the lawyers who will represent him. The decision of the Bar Council impeded that right and so, unless there was some sort of justification based on the interests to justice, which is a legitimate exception to Article 6, there was a clear violation. The justices considered this, but also looked at a range of cases from the European Court of Human Rights, such as Ex and Norway from 1975 and Correa de Matos and Portugal from 1999. These were all fairly similar cases to Maguire's, and arrived at the same principle each and every time. While the accused does indeed have the right to a fair trial under Article 6, that does not include the right to make choices about how said trial is actually conducted. The focus therefore is on whether the representation is adequate, more than the freedom of choice. Another factor that clearly impacted on the lead judgement from Lord Kerr was the insistence by Maguire that Barlow should be the lead counsel. The Bar Council's decision meant that he could still have acted as the junior counsel, and so it wasn't like Maguire had actually been denied the representation he desired, only the form that it took. In something that in any other context would be a sassy put-down, Kerr pointed out that the only practical difference was that Barlow wouldn't get as much money as junior counsel, but that hardly affects the fairness of the trial. Ultimately, the question is about what is in the interests of justice. While the wishes of the defendant are clearly a relevant factor, the right to a fair trial is not an absolute right, and therefore some interference is to be expected. The functioning of a legal aid system doesn't mean that a defendant gets to pick whoever he or she likes to represent them, and have it paid for out of the public purse. Overall, I think that my view of this case might be quite different to a lot of other people's, including the Supreme Court, so you might have to bear with me on this one. In essence, I think that we have lost sight of the actual nature of Article 6, and it comes down to this. Is the right to a fair trial simply about the administration of justice within a state, or can it actually imbue an individual with personal rights? For me, it's the latter. The European Convention on Human Rights was originally drafted to grant individuals a range of freedoms such as the right to privacy, freedom of expression, basic liberty, etc, etc. Some might be critical of this because there is more of an emphasis on libertarian principles than things like equality or community, but that is just the Western philosophical and cultural tradition of the drafters coming through. 
In any case, the point is that when it comes to Article 6, this idea and background has been lost over the years. Of course, rights do include a state responsibility as well as an individual freedom. There has to be a proper judicial and court infrastructure in place for the right to exist in the first place, and even a system of legal aid, but doing that alone isn't enough. Just because the state provides a service, that doesn't then mean that they can dictate the terms of that service and ignore individual liberties in the process. There is absolutely no way that people would tolerate the National Health Service if it meant an end to patient autonomy. So why do we accept a legal system that doesn't allow people to choose their own counsel? In Mr Maguire's case, there really is no reason why he couldn't have the representation that he wanted. The burden of proof should be on the state to justify the interference with the right, but the truth is that there is no good reason on offer. There would be no increased burden on the state, and, as was conceded in the judgment itself, there would be no impact on the fairness of the trial. Once again, we are faced with an officious regulatory body that sees fit to dictate an area of life where they have no business doing so. When a professional body holds all of the cards, they soon find that this monopoly of power is not enough, and that in turn has unforeseen side effects. In this case, it came close to being the difference as to whether Maguire was a free man or not. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the UK Law Weekly podcast, and thanks as ever to bensound.com who provides the theme music. A bit of news from me before I let you go, I now have a free ebook that is available to download if you are interested. Um, it's mainly designed for law students, it's about how to answer a problem question, which I know a lot of students struggle with. Um, that is available from uklawweekly.com. There is a sign up down the right hand side, you just put your email in and you will be sent a copy of the book. Um, also, you will be added to my mailing list and I'm sending out quite a few different articles, legal thoughts and analysis, um, which hopefully you will also find really interesting as well. So that's all available at uklawweekly.com. Um, I'll be back with another episode of the podcast next week. But in the meantime, bye.